All right, well, uh, thank you guys for coming out. And we hopefully will be doing this about once a month. I don't have the next speaker yet. But today's topic will be uh, human trafficking in the Marshall Islands and probably around the world, World War II. And so, without further ado, Angela, if you could kind of introduce yourself. You guys can welcome her. I showed up on a Friday. Does that get an applause? Um, so my name is Angela. I work with IOM, the International Organization for Migration. Um, so we have an office here in Madura, and we have pro programs that work on human trafficking, like we'll talk about today, climate change adaptation, disaster risk reduction education, and disaster preparedness and response. Um, we also have a migrant resource center. So if you or anyone you know is thinking about moving to the U.S. and you want to go through a training course on that, it's open to the public. But today we're going to talk about human trafficking. So human trafficking is about people moving from one place to another. When you go, when you're moving either in your country or outside your country. Okay. So I have some questions for you first, and you're a very small group, so you all have to participate. If the answer, I'm going to say a sentence, and if you answer yes, I want you to stand up, and if you answer no, stay seated. Okay? So the first question is, so I'm going to say, I am a girl. If you're a girl, stand up. Okay, sit down. I am a boy. Alright, everyone's understanding. Okay, sit down. I am a girl. I am Marshallese. Oh, okay. Oh. Put it on my Put it on I don't
anything, you can just tell me what you saw. You don't have to have a small vision. So the girl, right? The girl. What do you think she was doing on the computer? Finding a job. She was looking for a job, right? And then she was talking to a man. I don't know if you could tell, but she printed her contract. She printed her contract, and then a gala. And when she got to the new place, uh, what did the man take? Took her passport. Her passport, away. Right? So he took it, right? Like the little green? Yeah. Her passport. And then they go in the car and they get to a place and he pushes her in her okay. That's an example of human trafficking. So here, we're going to talk more about what makes it human trafficking and the different things we see. So what is human trafficking? Just a big, long definition. I talk to you got more copy, we want to make you memorize. I'm not going to make you memorize this. What we're going to do, you can see there's all these words, it's very long. This is the definition you know, Vajan Bele in English that's used all over the world. So pe people use it when they follow this international agreement, this protocol on human trafficking. So it gives everyone a common understanding of what human trafficking is. So we use the same definition. We're, right now, we're trying to make the Marshallese translation, going back and forth with different experts so that we'll have a Marshallese form. Okay, Kia, let's look at it, and we're going to make it into smaller pieces, break it down a little bit, <laughs> break down. We've got three different pieces you have to have. So it says the essentials of trafficking definition. So this is all from that big, long one. When you're looking at it, we call these the activities, the means, and the purpose. You need all three for it to be human trafficking. Okay? So I use activity, cobra means, cobra purpose equals human trafficking. So activity. These are the types of things a human trafficker might do with their activity. Like your activities are playing volleyball and going to school. The first one is recruitment. Does anyone know what recruitment is? Or an example of recruitment in the Marshall Islands? Or well, people that recruit? Teachers. Ah, the school recruits teachers. They put on the internet, there's a job at Assumption. Come to Madro, it's really great. Be a teacher at Assumption. The Army. The Army comes here and recruits, right? If you go to the army, you'll have this, you'll have this, this is the job. So those are good recruitment. Assumption is good at recruiting, they say what they'll deliver. The army, they recruit, you go and work the army. How about in the movie? That was recruitment. How about the man? He was not an honest recruiter. So activities can be recruitment, transportation. Does anyone go in a taxi? That's transportation. School bus. Does it come to no. Laura, maybe you live in Laura and you take the Laura bus and you come. Air Marshall Island, Shipping Corporation. Those are all examples of transportation. Transfer. Maybe you have a friend in Dubai and they need some money, your family. So maybe you put money in the bank of Marshall Island and they transfer the money to e -buy. And then harboring and receipt of a person. So if I'm a human trafficker, and I'm doing human trafficker, if you get a belly fed, flip, or join human trafficker. They're bad people, they're not. When they don't join, we get a belly fed. So I have a person with me, a worker. If you were on via Gage, not a flip, and we're on via. So I can have a person with me, and I will sell that person to Cliff. If Cliff is going to buy and it's okay, on So if Cliff, he takes the person back to his house, 
he receives that person. Same as you go to the store, you give $20, they give you a bag of rice, you receive the rice. So these are different activities human traffickers do. They recruit, they transport, they transfer, they buy and sell people. How do they do it? The means. So I don't think many people say, yeah, yeah, I want to be trafficked. Human traffickers, deception. They use a lot of lying and deception. In the movie, The Man Lies, he says, oh, you're going to have this nice job, you're going to have money, no problem. Then the girl went, he took away her passport, and he made her do something else. He lied. Who we are? So, deception, fraud, lying, Sometimes abduction or kidnapping, around 40, casualty, steal children. And sometimes threat or use of force or abuse of power. So keep in human trafficking. With human trafficking, the person being trafficked does not know they are being trafficked with that is. They do not give their consent. My new Marshallese word for the day, consent, uh, melon, 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 he or she, and sometimes they use threat or force. Well, maybe there's a person with lots of power. Now, who in the Marshall Islands has most of power? Who is more powerful? Dad or who? Um, same, same. Depends how you use your power, right? A lot of people have power, and some of them use it for really good things, and some of them for not so good things. Heroes. Heroes. Right? Lots of power with the heroes. Total Government, elected officials, ministers, senators. I like hero assumption. Teachers, Teachers principals. And what about people that wear uniforms? Police. They're across the road, you have the police station. Right. These are all people who have positions of power. They have power, but sometimes, like you're saying, they can be corrupt. I think maybe you know what corruption is. It's in the newspaper a lot. It's when people who have power use it the wrong way. They lie, they cheat, they steal. So sometimes a person with power might make a person with less power do something they do not want to do. So for example, maybe I'm a policeman, police woman, <laughs> police man, police woman, and maybe I'm powerful, I'm very high up, but I'm also corrupt. I'm bad and I'm a human trafficker, I work with these human traffickers. And maybe I say to you, you're only in high school, I'm the policeman, and say, if you don't come with me and go with me and do this right now, I will put your mother and father in jail. In a scale of the game, Mama and Baba, who I used to talk to you about. They're not big fit, not Elon Kazuri, but, okay? I'm in a position of power, and you're only high school students. Like you on a duck, eh? Boy, not powerful. Maybe it's in Philip when they got a name on it, but sometimes maybe it's a Negro, or a senator, or a minister. They have power, and maybe they make people do things they do not want to do because they have the power. So the key thing to remember, again, is not consenting willingly. The person with power will make you do something you don't want to do against your will, but you have to do it because of that. And the third thing, so what happens to the person being trafficked? So you have the things the traffickers do, the activities, you have how they do it, they use a power and force where they lie, but what happens? And it's really sad what happens. 
sorry to ruin your Friday night, but it's important to know. Okay, sometimes it can be forcing people into prostitution. Sometimes it can be um, forced labor. So maybe someone gets a job on a fishing boat, and the captain says you will get $2,000 for one week, you'll go home every three months, you'll make lots of money. So the man goes, but he gets on the boat, and then they take away his passport, they don't give him any money, they don't let him use the phone, they make him work 20 hours in one day, seven days a week, and they stay out in the ocean for months and months. That's forced labor. You're not paying someone minimum wage or what you promised. You're making them work more hours, and you're not allowing them to eat. You're forcing them to eat. Um, and then other things like slavery or servitude. Sometimes slavery, I might buy a person, try to own that person. They don't get paid at all. They have no rights. They work all day, all night. And in some cases, even, they might cut you open, human traffickers remove organs. They take your liver and your kidneys, and we have a little black market, way last one in. Lots of money in the market of selling organs in some way. So these are some, some things, okay? This is understanding that big definition. We broke it down into smaller things. Does anyone like math class? No. Math? Yay! There's always one or two. We're like, yeah. Okay. No one wants to be that person. Think of it like a math equation. You need one of these, just one of these, one of these plus one of these plus one of these equals human trafficking. Okay. If you only have this one and this one and not this one, it's not considered human trafficking. Maybe it's really bad and illegal, but it's a different crime for human trafficking. So, in the movie, in the short video, we saw recruitment plus deception, he lied, and it doesn't really show us, but probably prostitution. So, human trafficking. Lan Rusko, this is for a dog, 18 years and older. Is anyone 18 year old impression in right? So, I'm 18, I'm a little bit older. My life. <laughs> no, not quite that many. So that was for adults. This is for children or teenagers under 18. It's easier math equation, okay? You only need activity and purpose. There's no mean. So let's look again at the what's in this this section here with the mean. It's things like deception, forcing someone to do someone, making someone to do someone. And you guys, you're still teenagers. I'm not gonna call you children. So you're teenagers. You still are supposed to listen to the policeman and the principal and the teacher. They are there to help you and guide you. Make you roads, your parents, senators. These people, you're 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 not old enough. You're not you haven't had enough time to be allowed to be making decisions about jobs and being Okay, so if you're under 18, for it to be considered human trafficking. You just need the first two. So maybe there's recruitment of a child, and then they force labor. Okay, it's just those two, and you can be prosecuted. Yeah. Or the, tra the trafficker can be prosecuted. Yeah. Question? Yeah, so we went to video. <laughs> Don't be shy. And one side in my belly, him, the body got in my belly. Because 
Yeah, and that's that, because they're using this. Yeah. So later on, we'll talk about supply and demand. So if we continually demand cheap things, yeah. then human traffickers might traffic people for child labor or for other cheap labor to produce cheap goods that we want. Yeah, because that's what we said. We told you that stuff is cheap. So you have to think about why is it cheap, right? So sometimes, yeah, it's a very it's a very complicated thing. But if we as people demand cheap things, maybe this is happening and what happens at this time. So it's important to know, and that's a whole other talk that I would love to talk about. So where do our products come from? How are they made? So we as consumers with our money can be making good choices to make sure that we're not supporting this in an industry. Okay, I have a short story now of the, the human trafficking. And this is a true story, unfortunately. But it's from Micronesia. Has anyone ever heard of the Blue House case? Has anyone ever been to Guam? Yeah, I, I haven't been to Guam yet, but this took place in Guam. So Blue House is a restaurant bar in Guam. And you know what I'm doing in Micronesia? It's very little Guam. And I'm on one, you know what I'm doing? You look Oh, it's a long Guam. A long Guam. And there's going to be lots of pay, come to Guam. You'll be a server, you'll work, you know, in the hospitality. And the 10 girls, they went. They took the job offer and they went. But when they got there, the man took away their passport. He forced them to stay in the bar. And he forced them into prostitution. Repair with M&M, 2004 to 2008. They were there. And they said to some people who came in, they tried to tell people what was happening, but unfortunately no one believed them. Because they didn't, they didn't know what human trafficking was. And the man, the Micronesian man, so the store was owned by someone from Korea. The man that recruited them was from Micronesia. And in the picture that some of the people involved, there was also a police officer who was corrupt. So they had a friend who was a police officer. He helped them. He took money and bribes and did not say anything. But uh, eventually, the good policeman, which there's many, many good policemen, they found out. They did an investigation. And in the picture, they're going into the police house. They rescued the 10 girls, took them somewhere safe, and the, the men went to jail. They went to court and they were convicted of that's close, right? Guam and Chuck is not too far from it. So there's many, many stories that you can share in human trafficking, but this one just shows you how it's important to also think about it for our community. But one thing, they didn't have money to do this condition. Exactly. So that's it. That's why. Uh, it's excellent. Why did these girls leave? So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that one. So that's an example of human trafficking. So from my story, what was the activity? Recruitment. Recruitment. The <coughs> means. Conception. And the purpose. Uh, human trafficking. See, now you like math. <laughs> got that one. Good. So who, who do you think can be a human trafficker? What people are human traffickers? Wow. With power, yeah. It can be really anyone with some sort of a power, depending on who they're having power over. Sometimes it's family members who can be that. Sometimes it can be friends. And I'm sure you're all really good friends and it's none of you. Sometimes it can be acquaintances. Your friend, friend, friend. Well, my friend knows a guy who has a job in Guam or Philippines. And a lot of times it involves criminal gangs or international organized crime. So it's not just one or two people, it's usually many people. It's like a spider web. 
This one does this, this one does this, this one does this, and they all work But you're, it can be anyone. And then there are some people who help the human traffickers. So maybe they're not as big up in the human trafficking, but they, they facilitate, they help. Providing transportation, maybe taxis or boats or vans. Maybe I'm the trafficker and I pay you a couple hundred dollars. Take these people to cliff. Don't stop. Don't talk to the police. Don't say anything. That's still illegal. That's facilitating trafficking. Professional. There's corruption with lawyers or health professionals. Maybe they lie when they're doing documents. And like we already talked about a little bit, government officials, immigration, border, law enforcement. If they're corrupt, they might help the trafficking. So in red it says know your right. Know what's right and know what's wrong. So that you can say no or you can report it to the, the police. And at the end I'll tell you about what's happening in the marshal and who needs to talk to So just know that the activities, needs, and purpose, those things are against the law, they're wrong, and that we need to be able to say no. And that sometimes can be hard if the person has a lot of power. But I'll tell you who you can talk to here later. So, what do you think the human traffickers want? What do they want lots and lots of? Money, yep. Money, money, money. All right, you can see in that picture, human trafficking is a $150 billion criminal enterprise every year. Like, I don't even know how to think how much money that is. But that this whole room maybe is full of $100 bills. Like it's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. And so there's a lot of business, there's a lot of money. There's not very many risks for traffickers. It can be a little bit easy. Because a lot of places there's no law, there's no legislation, people don't know. Um, there's a low cost of doing business, meaning if I don't pay you through my forced labor, I don't give you very much food, I do not give you a nice house, I make all the money, and I take all the profit. Victims can be repeatedly exploited or sold. So maybe you've seen some movies where they sell drugs, guns, or gangs. If I sell drugs, if I sell marijuana, you smoke it, it's finished. If I have a person, I can sell them more than one time, over and over. Just right like we were talking about, supply and demand. So if, there's a, if people are asking for cheap labor, if they're asking for prostitution, human traffickers will provide. So the more we bring down the demand, the less <coughs> so why why didn't those girls in Guam leave? Why did why did not why didn't they just leave? Afraid their passports were taken, they didn't have money. Exactly. The so human traffickers they do lots of things to make their victims so scared that they don't want to leave. And maybe, if you said, they you take your passport, you can't fly on to the United if you don't have a passport. Maybe, sometimes they um, will use violence and fear. They'll beat people up. They might say, oh, I know your family. I'll hurt your little sister if you do not listen to me. So human traffickers are very awful people. They use a lot of these things to keep that power in control. Sometimes maybe you think if it's a Marshallese man who ends up on a fishing boat. Maybe the fishing boat goes to Malaysia. Well, in a Dade Kadibele, for that name. A Dade Kadibele. Ends a lot from a Madali local in that day. And ends in that. So he's going to be scared. He's isolated. Different culture, all that stuff. Sometimes they'll use, they'll make people drink alcohol and be on drugs so that they're so out of it all the time they don't go into that. So 
thing is, lots of different ways to control the distance. But it's not easy to meet. So who can the victim be? Anyone. Yes. I know a lot of our examples, some of the examples is a lot with women and trafficking and prostitution, but it can be men. It can be anyone. But some people, some people are a little bit more vulnerable. They're a little bit more at risk. So people who have a desire to migrate. So maybe people are thinking, oh, I really want to go somewhere else. I'm looking for a better job. I'm looking for better education for my kids. Human traffickers, they're looking for people who are vulnerable. Migrants are vulnerable because they're away from home. They might be searching for work. All that kind. Um, if people don't have a lot of money, if they're in debt, they might take a job from a recruiter more easy than if they had a good job already. Sometimes, if there's problems at home, maybe their mom or dad is also fighting or abuse, they might want to get away from it. They might be searching for something else. Um, if you don't know what human trafficking is, then it's hard to keep yourself safe, right? So it's a lack of education. And like we've already talked about, demand for inexpensive labor is also. And this last one, it says restrictive immigration policy. For you guys, you can, if you have a Marshallese or FSM passport, you can go to America. You, you can fly there, you don't need a visa. But lots of countries in the world, like Afghanistan, Pakistan, Syria, Nicaragua, you need a visa to go to the country. So human traffickers might say, oh, Stephanie Pada, you need some money. Don't worry, I'll make your visa. But they're lying and they're making a mistake. So they, they will use these different ways to target people who are more vulnerable. Is the rise in number of refugees uh, equating to more people trafficked? Oh, absolutely. It is huge right now. So it's the Syrian crisis. Right now, this is the biggest migration crisis since World War II. There are more people leaving because of war now than there ever has been since 1947. And all those people, if you look at the news, trying to go to Europe, human traffickers are everywhere. They're looking for vulnerable people. Say if you're a man and you've taken your family out of Syria because it's so bad, and you're in Turkey, and you've, you've been there for five months, you don't have a job, maybe you don't have immigration papers, human traffickers are looking to take advantage of traffic people in those vulnerable. It's really, it, it's, it's really bad and there's not enough funding <laughs> for organizations like IOM and other UN organizations to be providing the services we need to protect those people. So the world's trying to do better, but it's, it's, it's not a big situation at all right now. Okay, and time for another short one. Ready? Don't fall asleep. Oh. <laughs> Hello stranger, you got me hooked up on your life What have you got for me? Is it my future? If I give in what I receive Thank you. 
So the number one thing, it is never, ever, ever the victim's fault. It doesn't matter how it happens, the human trafficker is the criminal. And like we talked about means, the deception, they lie, they support. So for the victim, it's really important that we as a community and that the different organizations work together to help them. So in the Marshalls, we, we have never had a victim of human trafficking or prostitution yet. That doesn't mean it's not happening. That just means we're trying to work on our system to uh, better investigate and prosecute. But if and when it does happen, We'll make sure they have shelter, somewhere safe to stay. Um, they can get counseling, see doctors, you know. They might have diseases, sexually transmitted diseases. If they've been forced to use substances and alcohol, they might need counseling. So these different services are here. And what we'll help do with IOM and the National Task Force on Human Trafficking, will help the victim find those things and stay safe. They stay from their trafficker, and sometimes they'll feel ashamed. Maybe they won't want anyone to know. The confidentiality is important and very, very close here. But these are the types of things we must we got to think about. And IOM is going to help other organizations get training and work together on this. Um, and every victim, every survivor is different. They each have their own story of what happened to them. So it takes a lot of patience and understanding and practice. So that's just an overview. We could talk for many hours, and I could come back and talk about any of these different subtopics for a long time and get into more detail. But that's just an overview of what to do in practice. And some things to think about for protecting victims and preventing. And I want you to know that there is a national task force on human trafficking. It's not just me and IOM working on this. Maybe because it's Friday night, I'm the only one that's here. <laughs> but the task force involves the Attorney General's office. So the chair is Jonathan Kawakami, Assistant Attorney General. Um, the Marshall Police Department. Transnational Crime Unit, Immigration, Stephen Jacqueline, the Director of Immigration, is the Vice Chair. Then we have the Maternal Affairs, Gender Division, and Adoption Agency, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Labor Division. Then groups like IOM, Whitney, and Chinese Legal Services. So we're very new. We just started officially in March 2015. So we're kind of like a baby. We're just crawling. We haven't gotten to walking or running yet. But these are the areas we're working on. We have a plan, a national action plan to be endorsed. Partnership. Today, we're working together. I partnered with the Sunset. Maybe we partner with other international organizations or transnational crime networks to prevent these things. Uh, prevention. Prevention requires education so that people know um, what human trafficking is and can help stop it. Protection of the victim, so having services available, knowing who can help with what, and prosecution. We need, we're working on writing a legislation. Currently, trafficking is illegal in the Marshall Islands, so it's in the criminal code, but there's, there's no legislation, and legislation is a guideline of, of how to do things and how to act on so we need to have better investigation, collecting evidence, taking it to the Attorney General, and then they can go forward with the process. So there's a lot to work on. But the fact that you came out today to listen is a really good thing. You're learning. You can research more. You can come to IOM. If you know of human trafficking or just want to find out more about what the Marshall Islands is doing, you can go to any of those tax courts. They're very willing to talk and just spend time. Um, we have some resources at IOM on human trafficking. If you're interested in victim protection or prosecution, you can always come to our office. 
talked about grooming. How do you tell good opportunities from things that are designed to look like good opportunities? 
double check, do your do your homework. So find out is the company say it's a job. So is the is the company organized somewhere? Can you get uh, a reference from someone else who's worked there before? Um, for example, in the Marshall Islands, if there's foreign businesses recruiting here, they're supposed to be registered with foreign affairs. That's a way that they're they're vetted ahead of time. Um, and talk, don't you know, talk to your, your parents or come to IOM or your teachers and show them the opportunity. And uh, if there's any way to go and visit before you take the offer, I know that's hard if you're going to Hawaii or something like that. Um, so get, get references, um, make sure it's actually incorporated because sometimes, especially online, it's really easy to make a web page that looks like it is really there. If you have friends or know someone who lives in that area, Maybe they can go over and check it out for you. Anyone have questions? Actually, I actually have one more. Uh, what about um, how can people protect themselves when it comes to um, social networks and online dating? Probably don't talk to someone you don't actually know. Um, you know, accepting any friend request. Highly don't recommend it because you don't know that person. They might, it might all be fake. You know, they, they could have one picture up and it's not actually a picture of them. So only talk to people you know. Um, especially if you're don't just request, don't accept anyone if you don't. I have never actually met them before. Um, because that that's another way that they can remember you. Any other picture up? They look like they're your age. Or they look like that got me. Well, that's kind. I got. You say you go meet them somewhere, and then there's someone who will meet Okay, so let's say you do meet up with the person, and you think something's kind of weird. What what are the steps to get out of the situation if that's possible? What can you do to? Yeah, is anything you can do? Well, I would say first of all, don't decide on a location that's like away from. Meet somewhere where there's lots of other people. So say you are going to go meet someone. Don't you know meet them at a coffee shop where there's lots of people around. Um, if you have a cell phone, make sure to have your cell phone handy so you can call someone. Um, excuse yourself, you know, or take a friend along. Too. If it's the first time, take someone else with you. Um, or you know, just that, try and not go somewhere where you're by yourself. And if you're in that situation, um, just keep your listen to your gut. You know, it's the first time your stomach hears that that feeling is kind of like, ah, uh, is that not a good idea? Listen to that and then go for it. Um, if you do get there, look for who else is around you. Be aware of your surroundings. So have you just gone by someone? Is there someone else's house nearby? If you could call out. But just, um, I, would, I would say, I mean, I don't know 100% for sure. That's a great question. And every situation may be different. Um, but as soon as that feeling of this isn't me, you probably all have that feeling before. I don't know if that was the right answer. It's kind of not good. Um, Listen to your gut. Those intuitions are there for a reason. I'll put my email up on the board. So if you don't want to ask if I ever want to understand that, um, you can probably feel free to ask me. And I look forward to modulating those items. Not, I'm the only one with LA, so <laughs> feel free to come in and talk to us. Uh, you know, we have our staff as well. They're just all right now. So thank you so much for coming on Friday afternoon. Thank you.